the arguments I make, but it, at least as a as a sufficient condition for rights, is the idea of practical autonomy that 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 you can that you can desire, that you can um, act intentionally, and that you have some kind of an understanding that your desires are being fulfilled. In order the, in order to have that level of cognitive complexity, uh, you have to at least be conscious, uh, whatever that means. People don't really agree at all with what what consciousness is with respect to humans. Uh, but we all know we, we have it and, there, and uh, we all know we're pretty darn sure that other humans have it. And I, would, I, I argue that, um, that from an evolutionary standpoint, when, when beings um, act in a certain way, that you can be more and more confident that, they're, that they are mentally equivalent the, the closer evolutionarily they are. The, the um, closer in time that we share the last common ancestor, the more confident we can be that, that physical actions have similar mental correlates. So uh, um, I'm pretty sure, I'm very sure, for example, that chimpanzees are conscious. Now, are they, are they self-conscious? Well, especially when they pass the mirror self-recognition test. Uh, and they act in a way that humans would by they looking into a mirror and they see a red spot on them or they and they touch it or they or your coca the gorilla you're putting on l lipstick I mean maybe she's a robot or maybe what's going on inside of her head has nothing whatsoever to do with us but the fact is is that she, that we probably had a last common ancestor perhaps eight eight million years ago which is not very long in an evolutionary sense now I also talked once about honeybees. I, I wrote about honeybees and drawing the line. And you know, if for some way, way we could show that honeybees were acting in a way similar to human beings, well, we had a last common ancestor perhaps 600 million years ago, which is a long enough time for us to evolve in very, very different ways. The same thing for, for um, African gray parrots. We, we had several hundred million years of evolutionary you know, work separates us. In fact, um, you know, we, we primarily have um, a cerebral cortex, which gives us, you know, the real intellectual power. Um, birds don't, don't have one at all, but they ha apparently have something else, and a, a striatum or something else that makes, that, that gives them the intellectual power that, that, that we can understand, and they have, they're, they're extraordinary beings. Um, uh, Bernd Heinrich, for example, do, does work with ravens, and uh, um, he, he um, shows that they obviously um, can think through problems and not in a trial and error way. So he, uh, ravens like chicken, chickens, they like, like to eat them. So he, he did a study, for example, where he took a chicken leg and he hung it from a tree branch. And uh, the only way that, that ra you know, ra ravens couldn't fly at them and eat, eat the chicken, they'd have to figure out some way of getting at, at the chicken. And he recorded instance after instance in which you'd have a raven who would see the problem, think about it for a minute, obviously, and solve it on the first try. So they, they had to be able to play it out in, in their mind. And so they would, they would um, take their beak and they'd, they'd grab, grasp the string and they'd pull it up and they'd stamp on it. And they'd do it again as they pulled it up. Eventually they stamped on the string and there was the chicken leg. So you had beings who were who clearly could mentally represent, and who could act, and who could actually problem solve, or you have chimpanzees or, or bonobos who seem to understand a theory of mind. You know the the idea that um, that um, that others you know, can, they, they can put themselves into the minds of others, which is which is a pretty complicated thing that our three and four year olds are just, just beginning to do. Um, so you you had. Um, you had Brian Harrod, who, who worked, worked a few years ago with, with chimpanzees and, and yerkes. And what, what they had there is they would have uh, three, three sets of cages. Cage, 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 with guillotine doors between the first and second cage and the second and third cage. And what he would do is he would find chimpanzee um, dyads, you know, that, um, you'd, where, where you'd have a, one chimpanzee who was dominant, one ch chimpanzee who was submissive and you'd put a piece of food between the two chimpanzees and the dominant chimpanzee would get the food and the submissive chimpanzee would not. So he would put a submissive chimpanzee in cage one and he'd leave cage two open and he'd put a dominant chimpanzee in cage three. Now if he just opened up the guillotine doors and put a piece of food midway between the two then the dominant chimpanzee would eat, would eat the food. 
But what happens when he would put barriers in cage two and put food uh, in front of the barriers so that the submissive chimpanzee could see the food and see the barriers and the dominant chimpanzee could only see the barriers. Could the submissive chimpanzee put herself into the mind of the dominant chimpanzee or not? And because if she could, then she would know that the dominant chimpanzee couldn't see the same food that she could see and would she then go and try to eat it and that's exactly what would happen. So. Now, these creatures are incredibly complicated. Now they they have not only a consciousness and a self consciousness, but they but they probably have other theory of mind qualities as well, which are very cognitively complex things.